Through the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about a bunch of indie horror games from the late 2000s and early 2010s that really cemented my love for indie horror. The indie horror classics we have talked about so far are Yume Nikki, Ao Oni, and Eve. There is another indie horror RPG maker game that is usually named along with these three games when talking about the indie horror classics of the 2010s. This game is The Witch's House. <laughs> the Witch's House is an RPG maker horror puzzle game developed by Fummy and released in October 2012. We play as Viola, who seems to be trapped in this forest, only being able to go into the giant house deep in the woods. Exploring the house, we find the diary of the witch who lives in the house. Through solving puzzles of the ever-shifting death trap that is this house, we go to the top floor to encounter said witch. Along the way, a black cat is following us, acting as our guide and our save point. When we finally get to the top floor of the house, we find Ellen, a witch who seems to be dying of some sort of sickness. She screams for us to switch bodies with her, and she chases us. The whole house seems to be caving in around us. Stopping into a room that we visited earlier in the game and retrieving Ellen's knife, we escape and get the true ending of the game. This ending reveals the true twist of the entire story. Viola and Ellen have already switched bodies, and we've been playing as Ellen this entire time. The game ends as Ellen in Viola's body walks away with Viola's father, going on to live her life for her and for Viola to die in Ellen's body. This would be where I would stop talking about the story of the game, but alongside the game there is a prequel novel called The Diary of Ellen that tells the story of Ellen's life before the events of this game. Centuries before the events of the game, Ellen was born. Unfortunately, Ellen was born with a sickness that made her body deteriorate constantly to the point where at the age of seven, she could barely walk without bleeding. Her mother would take care of her and love her dearly, but Ellen was always suspicious that her love was superficial, that she was actually a burden on her. Ellen's father, on the other hand, never looked at Ellen or even spoke with her. One day, Ellen's mother abandoned her and her father and left them on their own. One night, her mother snuck back into the house to get the rest of her things, but Ellen catches her. Ellen sees how extravagant her mother looks now, implying that she ran off with someone else, and in anger, Ellen kills her mother and then her father and runs into an alley where she expects to die. The same black cat we see in the game walks up to Ellen and thanks her for feeding him the souls of her mother and father, and offers her some magic to help her live. Ellen, not wanting to die, takes up the offer and she wakes up inside the house, with all of the symptoms of her sickness vanishing. The house is able to manifest whatever it is she wants. She only needs to think about it. She's just given the stipulation that she cannot go outside of the house. One day, Ellen longs for a friend to come over and be with her. She ends up using the woods to lure a little boy to the house with whom she plays with over the course of a few days. One day, the little boy wants to show her a bug outside the house and convinces her to step outside. As soon as she does though, all of the symptoms of her sickness come back and the boy runs away from her. The cat brings her back to her room and reveals the reality of the situation. The cat says that she must stay in the house or else the house's magic can't affect her anymore. If she wants to obtain a spell that can cure her of her sickness, she must gather more souls for the house to eat. Ellen then ends up luring the boy to the house once again and allows the house to eat him. This leads to a centuries-long murder spree where Ellen constantly lures people into the house to die in exchange for a crow demon to bring her medicine and the cat demon to eventually teach her this spell. During this time, Ellen starts to get more and more jaded and numb to the horrors as time goes on. Even then though, all she ever wanted was for someone to love her truly. After centuries of murder and Ellen's sickness persisting despite the magic, the cat finally tells her that he can teach her the spell. Enter Viola. Viola is a 13-year-old girl who lives in the village by the woods, and one day she gets lured to the house where she meets Ellen, who is now sick and dying in bed. Viola decides every day to come over and play with Ellen. Through the weeks of being with her, Viola truly came to love Ellen and wanted to help her as much as she could. One day though, Ellen tells Viola that she's going to die very soon, causing Viola to wish that they could switch bodies even if only for a day. The last day they were together, Viola gets told by the cat what Ellen intends to do, but the events are already transpiring as they speak. Ellen cuts out her eyes and cuts off her legs, 
and then begs Viola to let her switch bodies for one day, like she said. Viola agrees and then realizes just how much pain Ellen was constantly in. Ellen, relishing in her victory, goes to leave Viola for dead and go live her life. Viola starts thinking about how Ellen betrayed her, but decided that Ellen deserves to live like this so she could finally have someone that loved her like she wanted. When she thinks about how Ellen will steal her father away from her, Viola gets furious and traps Ellen in the woods, leading to the events of the game. That is the most abridged version of the story I could give you. Please, if any of this sounds interesting to you, I implore you to please play the game and read the books and support the official releases in order to get all of the details of the story. So does the witch's house hold up in 2023? I am confident in saying that the answer to the question is an obvious yes. The pixel art in The Witch's House is phenomenal, all of the characters look amazing, their character designs are astounding, and the house was a surprisingly interesting setting for this all to take place in. No puzzle was too complicated to solve, it was all good fun, and even the chase sequences were fun. Every single scare in this game got me. I thought horror games didn't affect me anymore. I can play through all of the original Five Nights at Freddy's games without peeing myself even once. Not even a milliliter comes out. This game, though? My pants are wet. I very much enjoyed the story as well, and the twist was legitimately something I didn't see coming. Not only that, but the reading material was also really fun to get through. Both the novel and the manga are very well written and provide an interesting story that really fleshes out this world. The only criticism I can give the novel version of the story is that sometimes they write out the screams or the laughs, and that just kinda screams fanfiction writer to me. Nothing against fanfiction writers, but it just has that air of amateurishness that you would get off of a teenage fanfiction. I love the irony of the entire situation. All Ellen wanted was to be loved and to give love, and when she had it, she was so blinded by her goal that she didn't realize she had it with Viola. I love this terrible tragedy. What did you guys think? Have you played The Witch's House? Let me know in the comments below and what horror game should I cover in the future. If you want to help us out, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to get more videos like this one, and hit that bell to know when our next video comes out. This week we'll be streaming Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Bros. Wonder, so if you want to talk to me directly and just chill, join us for those streams. This Friday we'll be covering Kirby Fighters 2 as part of our Kirby retrospective, so join us there as well. If you super want to help out the channel, hit that join button to get a shout out in every video like Andrew's Retro Games, as well as get videos earlier than everyone else. You can also go down in the description and buy our shirts, mugs, and stickers in our merch store. Every cent helps us bring bigger and better content to you guys. With that, I'm Bottles and I bid you, my well-esteemed ghouls, adieu.